Hey, everybody. Welcome to the official Do Good Better podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Kirby. And of course, we talk about things that the uh, small and medium-sized nonprofits uh, who are doing wonderfully great things need to hear. And I feel like this is the greatest guest that we could possibly get before the Christmas season starts. And if you are watching on YouTube and you are watching on Facebook and everywhere else, you will greatly understand and appreciate this. But it's rare that I get to interview somebody that I have like a philanthropic crush on. I'm going to explain this later where I look to uh, the community and I say, like, who is doing the greatest amount of good and who is doing the most awesome things in the front? And my guest is doing just that. I would like to welcome to the show Julie Peterson Klein. She's the executive vice president and chief culture officer at Bell Bank. Julie, welcome to the official Do Good Better podcast. Thank you so much, Patrick. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, if uh, if you're listening to this on uh, iTunes or listening to this on uh, Stitcher, wherever you find the uh, official Do Good Better podcast, Julie is dressed up like a Christmas tree. And it is very appropriate uh, that we are doing this show and releasing this right before Christmas because one of the greatest things that Bell Bank does uh, here in this region and, uh, and really throughout the United States is their Pay It Forward program, which is sort of giving and empowering their uh, employees to, to donate to small nonprofits. Julie happens to be the person that came up with this. And so I would love to uh, talk about that today. But before we get started, and you're scrolling through this, and you're getting through all of your, uh, uh, your, your busy work, but you want to listen to this podcast. Julie, why don't you tell the audience who you are, what you do, how you got there, kind of a 5,000 foot view of you. That sounds great. So hello everyone, I'm Julie Peterson Klein and I have been blessed to be at Bell Bank as the chief culture officer for the past 22 years. Um, and you know, you land at a home that fits perfectly with your personal values and your heart and you stay there for your entire career. Mm -hmm. So I'm very honored to um, be there and spend my time at Bell. And one of my favorite, I'm not gonna talk about what I all do at Bell, but one thing today I wanna talk about is the most favorite part of my job is the Pay It Forward program. It's completely changed my life here at Bell. So I'm just happy to be here. Um, to talk a little bit about that um, and uh, share some insight on that with all of you. And how did how did you start this? I, I'd love to know the background because you're in 22 years and how long has this been going on? How long has Pay It Forward gone? So our Pay It Forward program began in 2008. So this year, um, starting in January of 2021, we will be celebrating 13 years, over 13,000 stories in over 17 million in giving. And it really started out um, from Mike and Char Solberg um, and their inspiration of the Oprah Winfrey show that um, gave away $1,000 to everyone in her audience. Um, so they saw that and we put our heads together on, instead of all of us here at Bell Bank wondering what we can get at Christmas, it turned into what can we give at Christmas. And it really has, um, and throughout the year actually, the many years, um, but it really has totally changed our lives here at Bell. And I'm so lucky and blessed because I get to read every single story and see all of the videos and I get to go out every year and we usually feature 10 to 12 to 15 stories per year. Um, and some of our favorite stories and I get to meet all of the employees and the recipients and get to know their stories. And I can't tell you how much that will change your heart if you do that over and over again for 13 years. <laughs> When it first started, when you, they, they first came up with the idea, uh, they see Oprah doing it, thousand um, bucks. How was it received at the beginning, right? And how did that roll out? Because I imagine that as a corporate policy, you know, because Bell is not a tiny bank. It's not a tiny bank in our community and really in the, in, in the United States. And so um, how, does that, how does that begin as a conversation internally to say, hey, listen, employees, we're going to give you a thousand dollars to go and give to your uh, nonprofit or charity of choice throughout the year? Um, our employees were completely amazed um, and I think surprised and excited 
um, we announced it at our Christmas party at the end of 2007, and then it began January of 2008. So we give all of our employees, full-time employees, receive $1,000 each year, and part-time employees receive $500 each year. And the it just kind of began from there. I mean, we started it, and we knew it probably isn't perfect, but we're just going to start and go, um, and we can tweak on the way. Um, we didn't realize that we were probably the only company in the nation and possibly world that um, had a program like this um, in that committed um, to giving our employees the opportunity to go out and give. And I think the beauty of the story is, I mean, our ownership group here at Bell um, has faith and trust in each of us to go out and take $17 million over the years and go out and do good in the world. And I am so proud of each and every one of our employees and all of the great causes that they have chosen over the years. There would be no way that our management team here at Bell could sit in a room and give those dollars away and find all of the amazing nonprofits, the amazing families that might be going through a difficult time in all of the people in the world. We have 1500 employees that are going out all over the nation and world um, and you know, giving those dollars. So that's been a beautiful part of this program is giving the money to our employees to go out and find the needs instead of us deciding where the money would go. If you're uh, if you're listening to this podcast, you're kind of shaking your head with disbelief on like how amazing this sounds. Uh, you probably missed a couple of things from our nonprofit discussions that we've had a lot on this show, which is, hey, you had an idea and you just went for it to tweak along the way. I think a lot of our nonprofit friends wait to get it perfect and they want to wait till they get a pitch right and they don't they don't like to uh, take risks on something that this is a you know, uh, an unbelievably sized bank taking a risk about a project and doing it and then your best tweak it along the way. We talk about this all the time. So I hope you paid attention nonprofits. This is exactly how you do it. And, and what were some of the hiccups that maybe you rolled out that you didn't like at first, but said we're gonna push through and tweak along the way? I mean, really we started the program with the genuine um, amazing thing of giving. You know, we didn't start the program for any kudos from right. customers or employees. It was really a giving program. Um, and I think that we were pretty prepared. We are always prepared. Um, but, you know, we made things more efficient and more paperless and more easy to gain, get the funds to our employees quickly. Um, one thing, I mean, I came in that Monday morning and I said to Michael, I don't know if there's any other company, I was thinking about this over the weekend, if there's any other company that's doing this, you might get, you know, a lot of media reaching out to you here today. And we weren't prepared for that. We just thought we were going to go have this little program here at Bell um, and be on our way to do good in the world and add value. Um, and we didn't realize how many other companies have an interest in doing this and are doing amazing work. And our philosophy is let's all lock arms and lock hearts together and do good because yeah. we can really change the world if all of us um, have this same focus. And how was it received by your employees? I know you said they were kind of shocked about it, um, but but you're from an employee culture standpoint, this has got to be some something that they now look forward to because they've built relationships with, with nonprofits that they get an opportunity to leverage additional money to causes they really find near and dear to their heart, right? Yes, I can't tell you how proud I am of all of our Bell team members and how they've been such good stewards of giving these dollars away. Mm -hmm. Every single one of these stories, they have reflected in their childhood or within their family or something they were involved in over the years. And that's where they give those dollars. They don't just give quickly and be on their way. Mm -hmm. um, and we could go on and on. I'm gonna share some videos with you, Patrick, that you can share with um, the people that have an interest here, but just um, all of the different people that we've met in the relationships that are formed. I The $17 million is completely amazing, but the most amazing part is how it's changed our hearts mm -hmm. and how it the relationships that are formed. We have little newborns that we gave money to, to their family when they were born 13 years ago. 
they stop at the bank now to see us and visit and they are 13 years old now. So that's really the true beauty of the program. And I can't say it enough on, um, we hire only the best people at Bell Bank, but this program in being able to give every year has only made us better. Our hearts are bigger, our eyes are more, and ears are more open. And after we give the dollars away, we don't just stop there. Um, it's really contagious. You just, it's part of our lives to get up every morning and figure out who can we help today? How could we add value and make the world a better place? And that's what we focus on. At the end, we are a bank, but at the end of the day, we really want to make the world a better place. And I'm so honored to be part of the bank team and the family and everything that these team members have done over the years has been completely amazing. When you watch the videos, you better have Kleenex. Um, because they will touch your heart. And I'm a firm believer, once you touch someone's heart, everything's changed from there. Because once it hits your heart and it's etched in your heart, it can't ever be taken away. Um, that will be there forever. And that's what I believe changes our world to the better, which that's what we all want right now. Does giving make a better employee? Does a person who gives and in an employee that that gives to a nonprofit or is involved in a nonprofit make a better employee from from you from your opinion of course i'm going to say yes but as you were explaining that i was thinking about over the years of all the different employees that i've seen or have stopped in my office given me a hug cried you know you asked how the employees responded they were shocked amazed surprised they cried they and then after you're giving that those dollars away every year and you get to choose all of these amazing places to put the funds um it it's just changed our lives which you'll hear is a theme through everything i talk about yeah but it's been amazing um our employees uh just have really stepped up to the plate year after year on this mm -hmm. and we don't plan to stop the commitment is there yeah I would, I would imagine that um, if that's the starting point from an employee's giving too. They don't stop at just what Bell gives them to, uh, to distribute. They're, that is the first, uh, the, maybe a part of it, but it's really taking inspiration from that and saying, okay, what else can we do? Whether it's time, talent, or treasure, what else can I do in my community because I'm being encouraged about it? And I'm wondering that if there's a business owner out there who's looking to make their 2020 a little um, more engaging with their own employees. What advice would you give to businesses considering doing something like this? Not, not to pay it forward, but, but involving themselves within the nonprofit uh, community. Um, what I wanted to say too is from the prior question that you have more happy, engaged employees, yeah. you know, that are thinking about things bigger than themselves. Um, which gives us all purpose, um, which makes us a happier person and a happier and more engaged employee. If another company wants to get involved, I'm more than happy to visit more in detail on what our program entails. But I was thinking about this earlier today. I mean, I don't know of anything that could be negative by offering a giving program because giving is... I mean, it lifts you up and that's what we all need and want. Um, and I've never met anybody in the world that I've ever met that doesn't want that. Um, that's why we also allow people to go out and volunteer. It doesn't just, it's not just the dollars. Mm -hmm. It's the volunteering out community. I feel better when I go out and do something um, to add value to the community and to the world. Um, and I'm assuming almost everybody else in the world feels that way too, especially your audience. Um, kudos to you on the do good. Yeah, it's <laughs> amazing, Patrick. Thank yeah. you for that. Well, I mean, here's the other thing. We're, we're genetically predisposed to feeling great about doing good, right? It's with that same chemical that, you know, that, that goes in your brain that that you, you eat a piece of candy, you get a little sugar, you, you, know, you have a, an extra glass of wine or two. That, that is the same chemical reaction that your body craves. Um, and it is uh, you know, sort of magnified when you do something great and then somebody says thank you and they show appreciation, they cry about how great, that's, that's why we love doing it. It's why it makes us feel good. And I think preventing 
you know, or, or giving employees the opportunity and giving the community the opportunity to receive as well as you giving. Uh, I think it's such a wonderfully unique thing. It's very Fargo. Uh, you know, it's very Fargo of us to make sure that we lift each other up, whether it's a flood or a, a pandemic, right? We're all sort of there for each other. And I think that it's so wonderful that it started here, uh, this particular program, because it is just, it, that is that is our genetics uh, here in flyover countries. This is what we are going, uh, what we're going to do. Uh, I know you're going to show videos and I, in the show notes, we're going to link to a bunch of these that I think people should go and they should watch and they should just be inspired, especially in the next uh, couple of weeks where we're just sort of ending the year uh, on, on, a, on a great note, right? 2021 is going to be even better. What are some of the, the stories, maybe even in the earlier part of Pay It Forward that you remember the most or the most that once you impacted, you're like, I didn't think that this would have any, like, that's an amazing story that I would have never thought would have come of this particular program that you would be uh, willing to share with us. Because I love those. I think the one, the couple of stories that really, when you say that, it hits my heart, um, are the ones where the employees have really reflected on something that's happened to their family mm. or when they were um, young um, that are truly amazing. The other thing is, is, is the pooling opportunities where people pool dollars together and you can get, uh, you know, give it, pay it forward, give to $15,000 or $20,000. Of course, those are huge and so fun to surprise those families. But some of the um, really, the stories that are reflective of somebody's childhood really touch my heart. There's a couple that come to thought. We had, we had an employee who had a dad that passed away from a terminal illness and her and her family, they were at the hospital with their father years ago um, during this time. And they were staying at a small rural hospital and they had to sit in a hard folding chair every single night by his side, holding his hand um, until he passed away. And this one really touched my heart because after he passed away and they got through kind of that process, then um, they gave, some pay it forward dollars, pooled some money together to the rural hospital to buy recliners for every single one of their rooms mm. so that no other family would have to go through that. Now that really touches my heart, you know, that mm. they've been through that, want to help the next family that might be going through that. Right. Um, one other one that I thought of was a gentleman who got up and spoke at one of our meetings here at Bell and he was telling us his pay it forward that he found a young um, boy who was 10 11 years old who his dad passed away from a terminal brain tumor mm. and he gave the family um, a pay it forward give, gift because he, that happened to him at that same age his dad passed away from a terminal brain tumor like we were all in tears because we never knew that about this employee. So yeah. like there's other blessings that come out of things that people have went through in their life um, that we were never aware of. And because of this program, we maybe never would have talked about. Mm -hmm. um, the other, you know, couple are just, uh, I won't go into detail. You'll see the videos and people can go to our website. We have every single year of videos out there. Um, but just the pooling dollars when you totally surprise the family with 15 and $20,000 and then 20 people pool in together from different departments within Bell. Mm -hmm. And once you've worked with a team of people, the networking and the teamwork and like there, those 15 people that went together, their hearts are then connected after that project. And we would never have really done that. They might have been knowing these employees. We have 1500 people. Um, if they weren't working on the Pay It Forward project together. So mm -hmm. those are some of the amazing things up and above the money that's given. I love, I love the purposefulness. I love the thoughtfulness that goes into giving. I think a lot of nonprofits, especially this time of year, just kind of do a, a shotgun approach. I'm like, I want as much, many people to, to, to know about us. And yet the more impactful donations and the most impactful gifts are the ones where they ask a little better questions uh, to potential donors to get them to see if it's a good fit for them. 
It's not necessarily about the nonprofits need to have, it's about the donors need to give. And if you can give them an avenue by which to feel great about what they're about to do, the length of time they're gonna support your organization is exponentially longer than that one time, one off particular gift. And I think that relationship building, that, in, that inquisitive nature of a nonprofit to ask what they love or what they're fond of or what they're want to make an impact about is is so representative by the pay it forward uh, because they then get invested in that organization a lot more than just here's some cash and i think that's the important part about this this is a first step to a long-term relationship with potential employees at organizations yes yep and like i talked earlier our employees don't just give and then walk away mm -hmm. they give and then the next question is in what more can we do Yes. Can we volunteer? What, when's your annual fundraising event? Can we attend? Yeah. And all kinds of different things that happen up and above. It's the beauty of relationships. Yeah. And what happens after you have that first initial um, gift? Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to ask this question, and, and I'm flashing back uh, about two years ago uh, where you graciously helped uh, host a, a donor panel at our at our do-gooders conference our first annual do-gooders conference take a risk you know this is your your mo like take a risk on somebody doing uh, you know, trying something completely new and, and you were hosting this panel that um, really gave an insight to some uh, of the, the higher capacity individuals within our community to ask them why they give and, and one of the questions that's always stuck with me was somebody in the audience asking how do you approach either a business or a person as a nonprofit. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, uh, the queen of do-gooding at, 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 at Bell, to kind of give us maybe some insight on how, how does a nonprofit approaching Bell as a corporate entity or from a pay it forward program make, a, uh, make an impact uh, or make, a, make themselves known or, or how, how is the best way to approach a business like that if you're a nonprofit seeking you know sort of support because I think that's a very confusing thing for some of the smaller medium-sized nonprofits who don't have a, a lot of uh, experience interacting with corporate America if you will well first of all I didn't even know exactly what your first conference was but I yep. knew if you were involved Patrick I wanted to be there so sure. it wasn't too because I knew you were going to be there so I knew it was going to be really good and that was one of my favorite days. It was so fun and I can't wait until um, the next one here in the spring, mm -hmm. but wanted to let you know. So what some people might not know is we have a pay it forward site, an internal pay it forward site here at Bell. So if there's any nonprofit out there that would like to get their information to the 1500 employees, we send out information weekly to our employees about our nonprofits in our communities all across the nation. Um, and kind of what their mission statement is, what they stand for, what some of their needs might be. Um, and then we see if we can get some dollars for those nonprofits. And we can send that stuff out, you know, quarterly or a couple times a year to kind of keep it in front of our uh, Bell team members. So that's the first thing. They can also email that to me and we'll get it posted. And I'm happy to meet with people um, to talk a little bit about their nonprofits. I do that a lot. Um, and get to know them, build a relationship with them, and then see how Bell can get involved um, with their nonprofit. So there's lots of ways to do that. And just, you know, just reach out is my biggest thing. And back to, you know, the program and the giving and all of that. My deal has always been, we don't have to have everything perfect. We just need to start. We need to take action. And normally everything that I'm doing anyway can be tweaked along the way. You just have to be okay with, you know, that wasn't perfect, Julie, and we should do this over here this way. And yeah, I'm, I'm good with that because I don't want to just sit back and not do anything because that can lead on to a half a year, a year, and then two years. And, you know, so you're better off just kind of taking action. I, if you're if you're a, a nonprofit leader and you're not grinning ear to ear about all the buzzwords we talk about all the time about building relationships and and, and making a, making a time and effort and energy to sort of approach and have a conversation and have them learn more, 
you're not listening because this is one of the best uh, this is one of the best conversations about to reinforce the fact that these you know that the bell is an anomaly in the sense that they were the first ones to do this but they're not an anomaly in the sense of a business trying to do good in the community and I think that's what that you can find in your own backyard are 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 banks or businesses who have the same sort of a heart for the nonprofit world as as Julie and, and Bell have represented here. Uh, but you need to take action about that too. You can't sit on your hands and you got to go forward. What do you see as the future of the Pay It Forward program? If you had a big, hairy, audacious goal about what you would want to see, you're creeping up on $20 million. So you can't say get to 20 because you're going to do that. Uh, but what are some of your big, hairy, audacious goals when it comes to this particular program that you would have never thought would be where you would go You know, when you started this thing 13 years ago? Um, well, I have full faith that we will have this program for many, many years to come. And I mean, it's going to continue to grow um, and we'll continue to refresh and always improve and all of that. Um, but one of my major goals is, you know, Oprah, who you can see a picture of her behind me. Um, <laughs> she inspired this program and I love her giving heart. And I hope one day that she'll acknowledge this program, which she has, but maybe she'll fly to Fargo and see us and maybe she'll match the dollars or you don't know what might happen. Um, but I just think just the one goal of having the commitment of this for many years to come is definitely going to change the world. Uh, I, I think it has already, and if you um, and if you're in this region or you're anywhere where there's a where there's a, a Bell Bank community um, in one of the multiple states uh, that they're in, you know that this is true. You you read the stories and you're involved with it. Um, and if you haven't, you know, again, please go to you know the links below and, and and click on and find some of these things. And if you're somebody who hasn't found that that charity to fall in love with, that nonprofit to fall in love with. Um, any, any, any steps that you would suggest from somebody who's just looking to get involved um, at, at, in their own community? What are some of the things that you maybe look at and, and you try to match up with your own personal um, sort of uh, do-good or insight and that little spidey sense of like, ah, I think this is going to make a match. What would you suggest to somebody who wants to try and involve themselves and do good in the community? You know, I wish I could tell people what to get involved in and I can, I can do that. But I really fully believe that you have to reflect within your heart on what your personal values are and what you're passionate about and what you wanna get involved in. However, I would do my homework on making sure you're showing up um, out in our community when we can, mm -hmm. but showing up and getting to know people and building a relationship you know, pick the top 10 that you think that you have a real interest in and then really get to know them. And my deal is you can really help all of the 10. You can spread the money around, you can volunteer, you know, you can't do it all at once, but you can do a little at a time. Mm -hmm. And then it starts building. It's like your discipline and your, it's just a way of your life. Um, and it's a great way to live. Um, just waking up every morning, wanting to help people. And I think one of the questions you were going to ask me too is what can everybody in the community do? Mm -hmm. And my deal is, and everybody's heard it, but we need to be kind to every single person. We need to add value every single day. We need to worry about less about us and more about others. Um, and then I try really hard not to judge. Um, and that, you know, takes work every single day, but I think that we're, we've came a long way. Um, and somebody asked me the other day from from what's your from one to ten what's your hope for america mm -hmm. and i said 10 because yep. i have full control over what i do for america so i have 10 um is mine it's the top thing because each and every one of us gets to decide every day when we get up what, if we're going to add value um, yep. so that's how every single one of us in our community can all get involved in just doing good, having your eyes and your heart open every single day to look for ways to help people. 
if you didn't know that you were talking to a an executive vice president or chief culture operator of a uh, of a bank, you would probably say that she was a guru that wrote a book on self help and self awareness and doing good. And it's amazing that there are individuals like you who are a part of the of the corporate uh, culture and the corporate structure, uh, and they are abundant. You're not the only one. Um, and I think that your voice of positivity and your voice of awesomeness and just doing good in general is so good for us all that I would recommend that you go and you watch all these videos if you're listening and you get inspired the way that uh, Julie and, uh, and Bell Bank have helped inspire the communities in which they live. Julie, the floor is yours. Let me give you the floor to pitch whatever you would like to pitch. Where can people go? How can people get involved? What, what addresses can they go to that we will link below uh, to get involved or to uh, look and be inspired by your Pay It Forward program? So after this session, I will email the links to some of the videos um, and how to get to our site. Also, they can email jklein at bell.bank and I'll get you that too. Um, and anybody that wants to just visit about making the world a better place, um, along with Patrick and myself, we're open to that. Lastly, I mean, I need one of your signs, Patrick, the do good. Yeah. So I want to order okay. one. I'll pay oh. for it. I'm going to go find another one for you. I'm going to ship this over your way and uh, keep it right there next Sorry, to you. I don't really ask for things, but that's too good not to have in my office. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't. That is a great request. I like it. Julie, thank you so much. I've been looking forward to this interview for a very long time. I am so grateful that uh, um, that you're a part of this community and, and, and part of my do-gooding uh, life in general. Uh, you've been great. Thanks so much for the inspiration constantly. And thank you so much for being a guest here on the official Do Good Better podcast. Patrick, I am honored to know you. Thank you for all the good that you're doing in the world. And then I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. 2021, here we come. We're going to do awesome thank this year. It's going to be amazing. And hey, while you're at it, why don't you just pay it forward yourself towards the end of the year, make 2021 a great starting point to get involved there as well. Thanks so much for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you. Bye.